so we're going to go to our panel of secure, securing ballots in the mail stream. So we are lucky to have um, uh, members of the Postal Service. So we have today with us Brendan Donahue, who is the Postal Inspector Program Manager of the U.S. Postal Inspection Service. Um, Brendan Sonikin, Postal Inspector Program Manager, U.S. Postal Inspection Service. Bob Parker, who is a Special Agent and Program Manager, Internal Mail Theft. U.S. Postal Service and Inspector General's Office, as well as Todd Watson, Office of Audit Director, Network Processing, U.S. Postal Service and the Inspector General's Office. Um, we know that uh, vote by mail and mail-in balloting is such an important part of our um, election process, um, as well as just voter registration generally. So we really look forward to hearing from you. You guys should, there you go. Looks good. Thank you for having us today. So I am Postal Inspector Brendan Donahue. I'm actually an Assistant Inspector in Charge in our Criminal Investigations Group. And I have national oversight of our election offense investigations. And I'm going to uh, introduce Brendan Sonikin. Yeah, good afternoon. Uh, Brendan Sonikin, Program Manager for Security at National Headquarters with the Postal Inspection Service, and also have national oversight of our election mail security efforts. So the United States Postal Service protects the mail with its own federal law enforcement agency, the U.S. Postal Inspection Service. As the primary law enforcement, crime prevention, and security arm of the Postal Service, postal inspectors carry firearms, make arrests, execute federal search warrants, and serve subpoenas. We have over 1,300 inspectors strategically positioned across the country who are tasked with enforcing the roughly 200 federal laws that pertain to mail-related crime. Our security work means that we help protect the 600,000 postal employees and 32,000 postal facilities that ensure the timely and secure delivery of election mail to every American voter at home and overseas. The inspection service is considered the first and oldest federal law enforcement agency in our country, and we trace our history back to Benjamin Franklin. And our work with protecting election mail is equally historic. We have helped secure election mail since at least the American Civil War, when absentee ballots were delivered to Union troops on the battlefront and postal special agents protected it on its way. During World War II, postal inspectors serving in the military established our army and fleet post offices that have evolved into today's military postal service agency. Our inspectors protected absentee ballots mailed to troops overseas in time for the 1944 presidential election in which an estimated 3.4 mil million military service members cast absentee ballots. Thanks, guys. Today, postal inspectors continue to support the pivotal role that the Postal Service plays in our nation's critical infrastructure and democratic process. One of the ways we do this is through engagement with various election stakeholders. How do we do that? We collaborate with the Postal Service on national initiatives. And we do this at the national headquarters level by contributing to strategic planning and implementation of election mail initiatives. We work with the Postal Service to identify risks to election mail, and we provide recommendations for mitigating those risks. Inspectors also engage locally with area Postal Service managers. Postal inspectors have unique access to postal facilities and employees across the country. We interact with postal employees daily, which helps inform our agency activities protecting election mail. Working with postal employees also gives us the opportunity to support postal managers who reinforce the message to employees of the important role everyone in the Postal Service plays in protecting election mail. We also like to engage directly with our postal customers. For example, we communicate directly with mail service providers that print and mail ballots for election jurisdictions. If your state if your state and you are choosing to use the U.S. mail to mail ballots to or from voters, we are ready to engage with you. We also meet with state and local election officials in national forums and conferences such as this. 
By engaging directly with postal customers, our goal is to collaboratively find solutions for election mail security issues in support of the critical work that you do. Finally, we coordinate closely with our federal partners. We do this by participating in interagency working groups focused on national security, law enforcement, and uh, support for elections. We take an active role in trainings and in exercises, as well as in intelligence and resource sharing. So how does this come together for your ballots? Simply put, there are significant security benefits to be gained from, follow, from following Postal Service election mail guidance on incorporating the use of the election mail logo and the use of postage statement identification of serialized intelligent mail barcodes and ballot service type identifiers, also known as STIDs. In combination, these elements of mail piece design help postal inspectors identify and track ballots as they go through the mail stream to ensure the timely and secure processing of all election mail. I'd also like to mention a little about the importance of address security. Keeping your addresses current is of paramount importance. During the 2020 election, postal inspectors reached out to all 50 state election directors through NASED and NAS to ask for your help identifying all the officially recognized ballot return addresses in every state. Those addresses were critical to our activities preventing address-related fraud. During this outreach, we took the opportunity to share with you some of what we do to support election mail security and investigations. Thank you for assisting us in our efforts, and we look forward to your continued support around address security in the future. The inspection service takes threats sent by mail very seriously. We provide 24-hour response for dangerous and suspicious mail reported on postal property. We also work with state and federal authorities to investigate any and all threats to election officials involving the mail. Inspectors are also available to help election officials prevent mail-related security issues. At the request of election officials, inspectors trained in dangerous mail response are willing to review election mailroom security and discuss recommendations for identifying dangerous and suspicious mail with those election officials. Finally, the inspection service is experienced with protecting the mail and the postal service during times of natural and man-made disasters. Our inspectors regularly provide security in areas affected by a disaster, and they support the Postal Service in securing the mail and restoring service and mail service to affected communities. With our unique access to postal facilities, inspectors regularly conduct security reviews of postal processing environments. While in postal facilities, we review the physical security of both the workplace and the mail stream. During elections, our inspectors are often tasked with conducting additional election mail specific security reviews. When we do those reviews, we are ensuring not just the integrity of the mail, but we're also supporting postal managers and making sure that they have what they need to properly process and deliver election mail safely and on time. During the 2020 election cycle, postal inspectors conducted election mail security reviews in all 50 states, the District of Columbia, and in nearly every territory. In total, over 2,200 security reviews were conducted by more than 700 inspection service personnel, encompassing over 13,000 hours of work. Thank you. Next slide. So as important as cybersecurity is for your own offices, it is equally important for the Postal Service. Cybersecurity is a critical component of both our delivery processes and also mail processing processes. So the Postal Inspection Service, we work closely with our partners in the Postal Service's Corporate Information Security Office to secure the network from uh, cyber incidents, whether those are purposeful or otherwise. We also work to monitor for threats to our own processing environment to ensure the secure delivery of election mail. We also work to secure, as Inspector Sonikin mentioned, addresses. So specifically during the 2020 elections and still to today, we monitor addresses for ballot returns to ensure that fraudulent hold, of, hold mail requests and also fraudulent change of addresses are not placed on those addresses. 
So in order to accomplish that, as Inspector Sonikin mentioned, we need your help. So we regularly have reached out, as we did in the 2020 elections, to state election directors or those offices to inquire as to ballot return addresses. But we also would appreciate proactive reach out to us with any changes to addresses so we can add those to our monitoring. In terms of incident response, so the Postal Inspection Service works with our partners in CISO, the Corporate Information Security Office, to actually respond to incidents and also investigate those. So if a fraudulent hold mail request were to be placed, even though it would not actually take effect, we will, we will work to investigate that, uh, and along with other cyber crimes associated with that. Next slide, please. In terms of our election offense investigations, which is a critical component of the security of election mail, we conduct investigations in a number of areas. So postal inspectors have really broad authority to conduct investigations, similar to partners at the FBI and other federal law enforcement agencies. We conduct investigations involving the theft of election mail, election fraud, and various voter fraud schemes in which, the, in which uh, election mail is utilized. And we also investigate threatening communications to election officials. So how do we accomplish that? As many of you know, we have postal inspectors throughout the country, similar to the FBI and their, and their election crimes coordinators that many of you are familiar with. We also have our own election crimes coordinators. And we have coverage throughout the entire United States. We have approximately 57 election crimes coordinators in total. And then we also have a headquarters election crimes coordinator, which is me. And so we make sure that we collaborate with our partners at the Department of Justice, uh, also Postal OIG for those matters involving uh, internal misconduct. Uh, and we also collaborate with, with the FBI as well. Next slide, please. As mentioned, these are some of our partners. I will mention for all of you, uh, when we conduct an investigation in every election offense investigation that we conduct, we collaborate and ensure notification to the Department of Justice and the FBI and those involving internal postal employees, we ensure coordination and contact with the Postal Service Office of the Inspector General. We do that every time. Uh, in addition, I know one of the topics that is at the, the forefront of your concerns are threats to election workers. We do collaborate with the, with the task force on threats to election workers. We share threats that are brought to our attention involve election workers with the Department of Justice and the FBI and vice versa when they become aware of those uh, with through their own channels. Next slide, please. In addition to the uh, election offense investigations that we conduct, we also conduct proactive monitoring for complaints. So how do election offense allegations or security concerns come to our attention? There are a number of ways. So first, the Postal Inspection Service, we have an election official hotline or election mail hotline. And that number is on your screen, if you can see. If not, it's 877. 876-2455, option four. I'll note that calls that are placed by election officials, whether those are local or state election officials, those are automatically escalated for priority attention. So we ensure that those re receive immediate attention and follow up from postal inspectors or postal inspection service personnel. In addition, the postal inspection service, we conduct proactive complaint monitoring. So uh, customers, your own voters uh, or other individuals can file complaints online at usbis.gov, and that can involve mail theft, it can involve identity theft, and it can involve fraud. We regularly monitor for complaints that are associated with elections there. In addition, the Postal Service and their customer, customer care center uh, receives complaints, and we monitor their complaints for those that may be election related. We also receive complaints from postal employees that we follow up on, uh, for those that are external in nature, those are uh, handled by postal inspectors. For those that are internal in nature, we refer those immediately to the Postal Service Office and the Inspector General. And there is also an escalation there, too, to ensure awareness of important election mail matters. Next slide, please. So in terms of the support that we can provide to election officials, uh, including all of you and those uh, local and jurisdictions within your own states, as mentioned, we can perform election mail uh, security response. Encourage you to reach out to the Postal Inspection Service in any of those circumstances. If you reach out to the FBI, we have close coordination through our election crimes coordinators and the FBI election crimes coordinators. And often 
they will also provide uh, awareness to us of any sort of matter involving uh, election mail, even if it does not come directly to us. And vice versa, it will provide awareness to them as well. As well, We also recommend election mail design security benefits. We're the, more than happy to speak to you about those, uh, as mentioned by Inspector Sonikin, uh, especially intelligent mail barcode and the visibility that provides. Not only is it a benefit for your office and your voters, but there is a security component there that is truly beneficial. And there are also other components that we can recommend uh, that are beneficial in terms of uh, mail key security and ensuring the security of elections. Recovered election mail notifications. I know this was a concern during the 2020 elections. The Postal Inspection Service has a policy in place. If election mail is recovered, whether that is during a natural disaster, a man-made disaster, uh, some other uh, incident involving election mail, or if it's recovered in election mail, we require that our postal inspectors provide notification of that recovered election mail to local election jurisdictions and state election jurisdictions. That is our policy, and we'll continue to follow through on that policy uh, with our partners at both the local and state level. Finally, mailroom security reviews, uh, as, as mentioned, that is an offering that we make uh, to local and state election partners to conduct security reviews of mailroom security to ensure that mail that is coming into your, uh, into your facilities or into local facilities that it is secure or you're able to identify security concerns in the process for escalating those concerns. And finally, uh, in terms of election security coordination, in many cases, we work with local and state election jurisdictions as part of task forces uh, in order to offer our advice and guidance on security concerns. And we're more than happy to coordinate with any of your offices now or in the future. With that, we'll turn it over to Postal OIG. So yes, I'm Todd Watson, uh, and along with me is Bob Parker. We represent the Office of Inspector General. We're actually an independent organization from the Postal Service responsible for providing oversight to the Postal Service. Uh, so we've got a short presentation for you today to talk a little bit about what our organization does and kind of the work we did during the past election and some of the key findings we had during it. So with that, I will turn it over to Bob Parker. Hey, good afternoon, everybody, and thank you for the opportunity to present today. Um, my name is Bob Parker, and if you can tell, I'm from Boston, right? Um, I've been with the Postal Service 26 years of the last uh, 18, have, has been a special agent with the OIG, and I currently serve as a program manager for mail theft and narcotics. All right, so uh, again, Postal OIG, what's our mission, right? The OIG was created by Congress in 1996 as an independent oversight of the Postal Service. Our mission is to help maintain confidence in the postal system by conducting independent audits and investigations. We employ more than a thousand investigators, auditors, and professional support personnel stationed in multiple offices throughout the country. Like most inspector generals, we help prevent and detect fraud, waste, and misconduct. We promote economy, efficiency, and effectiveness. We promote program integrity and keep the Postal Service Board of Governors, Congress, and Postal Service Executive Management Team informed of problems, deficiencies, and corresponding corrective actions. We differ from the inspection service in that the OIG has primary jurisdiction over internal crimes committed by postal employees. The inspection service, as noted earlier, investigates external crimes against the postal service and provides that security blanket for the mail as it flows through the postal system. Next slide, please. What do we do? Well, we have two primary, primary missions, investigations and audits. Under the investigations, we prevent and detect fraud, waste, and misconduct, and we strive to deter postal crimes committed by postal employees. Under the audit function, we determine the efficiency and cost effectiveness of programs and operations. Within our Office of Investigations, we have multiple different disciplines. Each of the disciplines uh, has special agents that are uniquely trained to investigate certain areas, some of which are contract fraud, financial fraud, official misconduct in general, healthcare provider fraud, healthcare claimant fraud, 
And the one of most concern to all of you is internal mail theft, which would include willful delay or destruction of the mail. Next slide, please. So what is our role? The OIG plays a critical role in protecting the integrity of political and election mailings by ensuring Postal Service employees properly handle mail from induction into the mail stream to its final destination. The OIG meets this mission by coordinating with the Postal Service and our law enforcement partners, including the Postal Inspection Service, Federal Bureau of Investigations, Department of Justice, and others. In addition, we conduct observations and audits of postal facilities to ensure that the Postal Service follows its established policies and operating procedures. Due to the COVID-19 pandemic, the number of Americans voting by mail was expected to increase significantly, and it did. The pandemic, coupled with operational changes enacted by the Postal Service, raised concerns among, among many stakeholders about the Postal Service's ability to process and deliver election mail timely for the general election in 2020. In addition, we wanted to check on issues we found in previous audits, including whether USPS was properly handling election mail. Next slide, please. So we engaged in interagency collaboration in 2020. In fact, in April of 2020, we began two working groups that shared election and political mail information and discussed ways to mitigate the risks. We engaged with our external law enforcement partners. We held bi-weekly meetings with the Postal Inspection Service. The OIG participated in several tabletop training exercises hosted by the FBI and the DHS. And we worked with the Department of Justice Public Integrity Unit on those matters that rose to the level of prosecution. We also met with the Postal Service and their election coordinator, coordinators for each area field office. In the week leading up to the actual general election, we established a 24 hour command post at our OIG headquarters in Roslyn, Virginia. The command post reviewed all incoming hotline complaints regarding the election and coordinated with our field operations so that we had a timely response in that final week leading up to the general election. I'd like to hand the presentation over to Todd Watson now to discuss our election mail oversight audits. Next All slide. right, thank you, Bob. Amy, can you go to the next slide? So uh, we conducted several audits leading up to the election, looking at how the poll service process, transport, and deliver election mail. Uh, we wanted to make sure that they were following their established procedures and that they were uh, delivering election mail timely. So. Basically, over half our organization went out and conducted observations uh, the month before the election, leading up to the election. Uh, we were able to complete over 2,000 observations. We developed an app for our team members to use while they were out conducting observations for them to quickly input the results of the observations. And we were able to actually take that data and almost in real time provide results to the Postal Service and Congress as well. Uh, so what did our team members review when they were out there? Well, we went and looked at postal plants. Those are the big sorting facilities that sort the mail to where it needs to go, as well as delivery units. That's where it'll come for a mail carrier to grab it and take it out for delivery. Um, so we wanted to go check to see if these facilities were conducting their daily all clears. Management is supposed to walk through the facility at the end of each day and make sure that they are clear of any election mail at that facility. Uh, so we made sure they were doing that. We also conducted our own independent review to make sure they were clear of election mail. Uh, we also wanted to make sure that they were postmarking their ballots according to their policy. Uh, one of the their policies is that they have a separate staging area for election mail. So once it comes in, it goes into this special area that's very high visibility, uh, and they know they need to expedite that mail out. Um, and one of the best practices we saw out there uh, was some facilities working with election officials to get an estimate of election mail volume and drop dates from, from your offices, as well as getting test pieces uh, to kind of sort on the machines to ensure that the pieces are machine compatible or would sort on the machines and not cause errors. Uh, like we said, like I said, we provided updates to the poll services daily on any deficiencies we found, and they took immediate corrective action on anything we found. Uh, Amy, next slide. 
So some of the high level takeaways we had from our report that might be of interest for you all is, you know, only ballots, and I know the inspection service was talking about this for a little bit, but only ballots with intelligent mail barcodes are included in service performance. So again, the intelligent mail barcode is a 65 digit uh, barcode that's loaded, located on the election mail piece that allows the poll service to kind of track that piece as it moves through its operations. Um, so I think I can't remember exactly what the service performance was of election mail, but it was in the very high 90s. But again, only if your pieces had that IMB could the poll service determine the service performance of those pieces. Um, also, only pieces with IMB can be tracked. Um, I think about half of all election mail pieces did not have an intelligent mail barcode. Therefore, could not be tracked by the poll service and were not included in its service performance measurement. Uh, some of the things we also found was ballot mail piece designs that resulted in improper mail processing. That was not a very widespread issue, but you know any of those issues cause is uh, challenges for the poll service to make sure that the mail gets to the recipient. Um, also, you know ballots can be mailed too close to the election, not giving the poll service enough time to process and get that ballot to the customer or to the voter, as well as for the voter to submit their ballot back through the poll service and get to the election office. And then uh, postmarking requirements. I just wanted to highlight this. Uh, most return ballots are sent via uh, biz what's called business reply mail, where the election office is basically paying for the customer to be able to return their ballots. Most of that mail would normally never go through what's called a cancellation machine, which is what puts the postmark on the piece. The post poll service kind of enacts special measures during the elections to make sure those pieces go through that machine to get those postmarks. So I just kind of wanted to highlight, that's like not a normal operation for the poll service to do for those pieces, but they try to educate everybody and ensure that those pieces go through uh, cancellation machines during an election. Uh, next slide. So for the 2022 midterm election, uh, we're going to do a lot of the same stuff we did during the last ex election, uh, a lot of cross agency collaboration, coordination with our law enforcement partners, um, poll service election mail coordinators and outreach to our external stakeholders as well. We plan to do additional audits of the poll services readiness for the election, as well as an audit on the service performance of election mail pieces during the election. Next slide. And uh, if you wanted to get in contact with us, if you ever have any challenges, feel free to contact us. Uh, here's a link to our hotline um, department, uh, as well as a, a phone number that you could call in as well. And with that, uh, we can open it up to any questions you have either for us or the inspection service. Thank you. Um, let me, I've gotten a couple of questions um, in the chat. Um, so first, I want to make sure it's really clear to everyone. When does USPIS get involved and when does USPS uh, OIG get involved. Like, just I want to make sure we have a clear blanket statement for everybody to understand the difference. So, Amy, I think the easiest way to, to understand it and put it is anything external. So, that would be external mail theft, claims of fraud, anything external to the Postal Service in terms of investigations, the Postal Inspection Service handle those. Anything internal, so those involving employee misconduct, the Inspector General handles those, I think. That's the easiest way to make that determination. In terms of security and conducting observations of mail conditions, that is a shared responsibility between both agencies. Thank you. That's what I was hoping for. Um, I have a question here. Um, does USPIS get involved if like a nursing home employee forges a signature on a ballot application that is then sent through the mail? Yes. That is a full sentence, thank you. Um, I see uh, Megan has her hand raised, so we'll go to Megan next. 
Thank you so much. Uh, and thank you all for being here today. Um, I really appreciate it. And I learned a lot. I think that was really helpful. And I hope we can get the slides so that we can share it with our um, offices and our, our other election partners. Um, so one of the the things we were continuing to work through and sort of develop our relationship with in Wisconsin uh, is our what happens in situations where there is some type of a, a problem that has to be inspected. So for example, there were there was mail found in a ditch in Wisconsin in 2020 that ended up containing two ballots, but we couldn't sort of discuss or get any information from U USPS until months and months afterwards about what actually happened um, or any information about it. So I don't know if you can speak a little bit to in situations like that where it really is timely and we're sort of left having to answer questions about what's happening, what are the facts of the matter. Um, is there somebody in, sp in particular that we should be going to in those instances to have those conversations and to figure out what information we can and can't release or who the media and others should be going to to ask those questions? So just a, a couple points and, and without speaking specifically to the incident that you're mentioning. But one, the Postal Inspection Service is a federal law enforcement agency. We abide by DOJ's general non-interference in elections policy. Many of you have heard that before, but essentially uh, we cannot take any overt action uh, investigative activity unless we have DOJ public integrity section approval uh, during that time period leading up to and after the election when results are certified. So sometimes that limits our ability to provide comment on any sort of investigative matter because it would make an investigative matter overt and therefore violate DOJ's uh, general uh, non-interference in election policy. So I'll add that as a caveat. One of the biggest issues that many of your offices deal with are when there are allegations of, of mail theft or election mail is recovered and it may be associated with an actual mail theft. And often that theft, just note, is not targeted towards the ballots, but it can be presented that way, uh, whether that's on social media or uh, by certain political groups um, or even uh, uh, by media itself. And that puts you all in a very complicated position. So during this past election uh, cycle or during 2020, uh, as part of identifying that as a challenge and even our own ability to conduct investigations involving the theft of election mail, even if it is incidental to the theft of mail, one of those barriers and challenges was that DOJ uh, general non-interference policy. So DOJ essentially revised that policy to allow for us to conduct uh, election offense investigations involving the theft of mail because of the immediate deprivation of rights to the voter. So we still consult with DOJ on those. So I think going forward, that may allow us to provide us, provide you, us to provide you with additional information that we previously weren't able to do. Um, in terms of challenges of who do you communicate with? So this offer goes out to all the NASA members. Uh, one, there are postal inspectors who serve as election crimes coordinators uh, that cover your area. We will make sure that we provide that list to, to Amy so she can distribute that to you. They're usually your best partner in trying to identify, hey, what's going on? Is this something you know, more than what it appears to be? Or is there some sort of misinformation or disinformation out there that we can address? So that's usually your best partner. But the second part of that is if you are unable to get a satisfactory answer from that, by all means, so whether it's Inspector Sonikin or myself, uh, we are here to be partners with all of you. We wanna be partners with all of you and we can help work through that. So um, recognize, and I, I ask, and I understand the challenges that you all face, that there may be some times when we cannot provide comment on an investigation. We just simply can't, and, and that is in fact because of DOJ policy, but in those instances where we can provide information to you uh, and we can provide reassurance or clarity, we will. Uh, that, is, that is my promise to all of you, we'll work through you, uh, and, and I make that as a genuine promise. We want to be good partners with you, um, and, you know, when you utilize the mail, and I just don't, I don't just say this as a tagline, but you are paying uh, as part of that postage for the protection that the Postal Inspection Service gives that election mail. And so with that should come our ability to share uh, information to the extent that we can, but your confidence in that we are going to secure that mail. I hope that answers that for you. But if you have any follow-up, please. 
by all means. Thank you very much. I could just add to that uh, what, what Inspector Donahue said is is, is absolutely on point. Um, you know, I get the emails when we inform you of the uh, the name uh, of the sender, for example, of a ballot that was recovered in the ditch, and I start to receive emails. Well, can you tell me a little bit more? Can you tell me a little bit more? And uh, I, I apologize, and I, I give a rather standard answer that you know I'm not at liberty to discuss an ongoing investigation. I know that sounds terrible. But um, I think I cannot say it any better than how Inspector Donahue uh, related to you, and thank you, Brendan, for that. Um, but you will, you know, as the inspection service said from the OIG as well, you'll receive the information on the face of that ballot. Um, we are going to uphold that same commitment as we did in 2020 to provide each of your respective um, uh, secretaries of state the information uh, associated with those ballots that we recovered during our investigations. But uh, again, uh, we're, we're just uh, in, in most instances, not at liberty to uh, discuss ongoing investigations. Um, so one of the questions I have in the chat is, um, what are the most recent statistics you have available on the number of charges that have been filed and convictions obtained by your law enforcement entities? So, in regards to the Postal Inspection Service, I will have to get back to you, uh, but I will get you those those numbers, Amy. Yeah, it's the same here. I would have to refer you to our communications director on that. That is not something I, I have uh, right at my fingertips. The next question I have is um, for OIG. What's the frequency of the audits you're doing? Um, this state received notice of ballots from 2020 found at two different locations. Um, in late 2021 or in early 2022? Uh, so typically we're doing a readiness audit during midterm, I mean, uh, during primary elections. So we'll kind of start that one and do our observations during May and June, which is when most of the primaries are occurring. And then we'll do our service performance one uh, closer to the election, basically doing observations from October up to uh, election day. So that's kind of our scope period. And when we cut off our observations is would be that that date. And um, you mentioned, I think, uh, specifically about those audits that you share information in real time with the Postal Service um, and with Congress. Do you share that information with the impacted states as well? We do not. Can you or like, I don't believe that we can. Uh, that would probably be sensitive information we wouldn't be able to share. Uh, I'd also say that's probably not a level of detail we gather during our sites anyway. Like when we see ballots uh, that are delayed, we're not necessarily looking to see which election office it came from, if that makes sense. Yeah, it makes sense. I can just also see how that information might be valuable to the election officials in yeah. that state. Um, do we have other questions? Um, Brendan, one of my questions for you, um, you mentioned that you would share the election crimes coordinator information with me. That would be great. And I will get that out to everyone as soon as possible. Um, do those election crimes coordinators do proactive outreach to um, at least state election offices? So uh, some do, uh, and we are encouraging all of them to do it. So um, some are more proactive uh, than others, um, but we certainly during 2022, some had uh, differing levels, or sorry, during 2020, uh, especially during that election year, had varying levels uh, of coordination. Some that were very uh, proactive in their in their outreach, some not as much, but we are encouraging all of them to have proactive outreach um, to their state election offices. I would just put in a plug that that seems like it would be a valuable thing to require uh, so that if there is an incident, people are not introducing themselves uh, at the last minute. Michelle, I will turn it back to you. Amy, uh, and thanks to our panelists. I think we got a lot of information that will be useful going into the 2022 elections and beyond. 
and I look forward to working with um, uh, people from the Postal Inspection Service, the Inspector General's office, so that we can um, continue to make sure that our ballots are delivered on time and we resolve any issues.